By now, I know that several of you know that I live in Japan, and I've been here for a little bit over half a decade. You may also know that when I moved here, I was not Catholic, I was just living my Jewish lifestyle. But it wasn't until about a year ago that I actually converted into Catholicism, embraced the church and all its teachings. But that is a rare occurrence here in Japan. But while Catholicism is rare in Japan, it does have a long and very deep history here in this country. If you want to learn about it, let's go. What's going on everyone? Welcome to the channel. My name is Daniel and today we're going to be talking a little bit about Catholicism in Japan. This has been one of the most requested videos as of late and I thought it was about time that I did a little talk about it. But I want to emphasize the word little because even for myself it's something that I'm not truly fully familiarized with considering the fact that I am new to Catholicism myself. Catholicism made its big debut here in Japan through the hands and the work of Saint Francis Xavier. Coming here in the 1500s, he brought to the nation something that they had never seen before. This is a country that is very familiar with Buddhism, Zen Buddhism, and Shinto, but Christianity was a completely new concept. And at first it was embraced not because of the religion itself, but the other things that came along with the Portuguese and all the other foreigners that were coming into the country. I'm talking about the introduction to weaponry, new language, new art, and new cultural aspects that the Japanese found interesting. However, for St. Francis Xavier and the folks that came with him, the mission remained spreading Christianity. So as he did so, it became something that for many people, it was just a novelty, something that seemed quite interesting. To others, it became something that they were willing to die for. Little by little, Catholicism started to spread but then came the time where the shogun of the time noticed that it was a little bit too dangerous for their governmental structure. Soon after came the huge persecutions of Christians in which you will hear in history of the many hundreds of martyrs that came from this time. Though a lot of them go unnamed, it is well known that there are plenty of Japanese Catholic martyrs. In addition to St. Francis Xavier, we have St. Maximilian Kobe, who came much later in time, around the 1920s, 1930s, and at this time the Catholic Church was really focused on missionary work, which is why he came to Japan. Though originally he was sent to China, but he had a feeling that it was Mary's will to impact Japan, that this would be fertile ground. So from that point, Catholicism had a sort of rebirth and it started branching out specifically in the area of Nagasaki. Similar to the feudal lords that St. Francis Xavier had to deal with, now came another warring situation. This time the opposition came in the form of World War II, in which, as many of you know, there was a tragic incident that happened when Nagasaki and Hiroshima were both struck by the atomic bomb. After that incident, Catholicism took a real, real hit, both literally and figuratively. Steadily, Catholicism began to decline. Fast forward to now, there is probably around 400,000 Catholics here in Japan. There are also less than 20 Catholic universities, a couple of Catholic sites, Catholic churches throughout the country, and even sites of pilgrimage like what we'd see in Akita for Our Lady of Akita and those apparitions. And that is also another very important aspect of Catholicism here in Japan, where that happened around the 1970s, late 1970s, 1980s. As for the real on-the-ground experience of what Catholicism is like in Japan, I will share my experience. Catholicism is not really well known, and in conversations with my wife, this is also the case for her. One of the figures that everybody seems to know around here is St. Francis Xavier. They know that he brought Christianity to the nation, but that's pretty much it. Christianity in general is not something that most Japanese people think of. As a matter of fact, even though they do celebrate Christmas here and Easter and Halloween, it's all cultural reasons. They have no idea what the origins really are for the majority of people. But there are some people that think of Christmas as simply Jesus' birthday. But in reality, just like even their own religion, which is Shinto and Zen Buddhism, religion is seen more of a cultural thing, not something that you actually believe in spiritually, believing in that there are deities or that there is one God. All of these things are just very superficial. Moreover, on that point, you will see that there are many people that want to get married in Catholic Church, 
or in Catholic churches or churches that look like Catholic churches simply because of the aesthetic itself, not necessarily because they're Catholic or Christians themselves. As for me, out in the wild, I've only had one experience in which I actually met a Catholic, and it wasn't even a Japanese Catholic. However, being here, I've been able to go to several Catholic parishes, and of course, naturally, I meet Catholic folks that are there, many of whom are Japanese, but a lot of the Catholics that you'll see are also Filipino or other Catholics that might be just traveling in Japan that happen to go to the parishes while in their travels. And all of this sounds pretty sad because, again, it just emphasizes the fact that religion in general is seen superficially. Christianity itself is quite small and Catholicism in particular is smaller still, which means that it's really, really hard to find Catholics out there. But with all that being mentioned, I still think that God has a very powerful purpose with this nation. Just like St. Francis Xavier saw it and St. Maximilian Kolbe saw it, I see it too. I think that there is a huge purpose here, especially considering the fact that Our Lady decided to make herself known here in Akita through Sister Agnes, which means that there is something here. And this is just me, just personally speaking, I do believe that there will be a reawakening of Catholicism here in Japan. I think that the mentality and the attitude of Japanese people, that of discipline and of devotion to whatever it is that they do, is perfect, fertile ground for Catholicism. But what will it take to bring this country to that state in which Catholicism really flourishes? I think what it will take is more people that are Catholics stopping by here and making their faith known. One of the things that I do appreciate about Japan is that when you do speak about spiritual matters or when you talk about your faith, nobody takes it offensively like they might in America, for example. They're always interested in learning about other people's cultures and what their beliefs are, their background. So when you speak about it, they're going to open their ears and listen. Will they take it in a serious way and want to believe it? Perhaps not, but at least it is a door in which you can build a relationship with, maybe invite them to Mass as I've done before, and they do come, which is great. Something else that I believe would be useful is for having other Christians around the world to offer up prayers for Japan. Pray a rosary for Japan whenever you remember this country and its people. I think that that is one of the most powerful tools, so if you're able to, please do so. And in another way is simply to live your Catholic faith out boldly. It doesn't mean you need to shove Catholicism in everybody's face. But, for example, just rock your miraculous medal. People always ask me what this is, why I wear it. Also, just go to Mass. Meet other Japanese people there. Try to have the conversations of how it can be spread, understanding their mentality. And in a way, this can apply also to any other country, wherever you guys may be watching this. But I'm thinking particularly of Japan because this is where I live and this is what people ask me about all the time. So again, just as a recap of the video, there is history here in Japan regarding the Catholic faith with people such as St. Francis Xavier, St. Maximilian Kobe, and other martyrs that have existed throughout the history of Japan. But the faith is still weak here in the sense that it's not well known, it's quite small, and it's in a country that is very atheistic. So while it is that way, I still believe that there is hope for this country. So I invite all of you to please pray for Japan, offer up your rosaries, remember us whenever you are praying. As I get to learn more about Catholicism in Japan, I'll definitely make more videos. I just wanted to make this quick one with what I know, with what I've experienced so far, so you can get a real world view of what I see now. Anyway, I hope you found this video at least a little bit useful. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed week. Shalom.